Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. Yes, this is one of our Zoom meetings. We try and do these every now and again to keep you in touch with, well, what's going on in the archery world and what we're doing here in our respective workshops, the other side of the planet. Yes, things are still happening in the world, meaning it's not so easy to get together, but things are starting to change. Um, shoots are starting to happen again, which is really, really nice. And a few events have been happening uh, various reenactment things. Torm, I think, was on the other day and various other things like that. Have you been getting out there? Um, <laughs> yeah, yes, we're, we're not allowed at Torm anymore. But anyway, that's another story for another video. In fact, we've already done one on that. If you want to have oh, a look yeah. at that one, that, <laughs> that is in our collection of videos. Uh, but yeah, so there are various things happening. What have you been going to? Have you managed to get along to an archery shoot? Has your club reopened? Um, what have you been doing archery-wise? We'd like to know. Please let us know in the comments. Um, one of the things that have been has has been happening was before I finish, it was it's Father's Day. Oh yeah, Happy Father's Day! As of well, thank film, you very much. Whether this will go out Father's Day, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is in Britain. I think everyone in America is probably wondering what I'm talking about because it's probably not Father's Day over there. I don't know when it is in America and everywhere else you are in the world. But Happy Father's Day, no matter what. Um, I expect you got a nice card from me, didn't you, Dad? Yeah, uh, no, I got one from the other, <laughs> the, other, the other sibling. I'm still waiting for my present, which apparently is threatened. Here is your card uh, now. Normally I get plied with beer and all sorts of goodies. So yes, digging the garden. There is your card. Thank you very much. That's made very by a card. friend of mine, Liz. Oh, oh, oh there's her address. I've got to cover that up. Oh dear, I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a friend of mine who makes these. She's cutting out, cuts out old um, Victorian um, type pictures, not originals, I'm sure, and is mixing them with sort of modern day stuff. Yeah, looks good. So that, that's the that's the theme of them. I think you've got her uh, quiver and arrows down there. Yeah, and she thought of that. Thought thought of us. So there we are. I'll hand that over. I'll hand that over over there. Does that work? Oh yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. There it comes. <laughs> <laughs> there we are yeah so archery events dunster i believe has been on what is dunster and uh when was well, that? it's still it's still on actually is Today it on is the last, it's the last, last day yeah it's a, a week of archery in the deer park in the shadow of dunster castle down in north somerset yeah. uh not far from minehead uh so a lot of people and hundreds of people come not so many this year. They had to cancel it last year, but this year they've managed to uh, do a smaller event. Uh, very often, a lot of people come over from the continent to shoot. They're not doing that this year for obvious reasons because of the virus. Uh, so it's um, it's going ahead, uh, slightly smaller and more carefully planned to shoot the normal. Not so many targets, and no doubt the social distancing and sanitizing and all the rest of it but normally in normal years um it starts on the sunday that would have been last sunday uh with the somerset archery championships and i was been going to dunster since 1968 something like that and I was actually third in the Somerset County Championships. And that was shooting not the long bow, I was shooting modern recurve bow. And in those days, it was one piece uh, wooden recurves and the Hoyt uh, Pro Medalist was the, the top bow. And it was the bow that the Olympic uh, champions were using. So simple or comparatively simple one piece bow um you know modern complexity type sights on them and stabilizers were starting to come in um aluminium arrows of course that was it um and there we are uh couldn't find a picture i will find the picture eventually of uh, those those early days but um a little bit of advertising for another video will be coming up which is the british archer magazine and that picture there oops, where are we uh, is of a shoot that's actually the 1950s but it didn't change an awful lot so no tents no spotting scopes um, just simple benches or seats to sit on uh, you took an umbrella if it rained and that was it um, so a different world really 
Nowadays, of course, um, you'll see compounds, hypermodern recurves, and some people shooting the longbow. In those days, you, uh, there might have been one or two people shooting longbow. And uh, the end target, I think, um, was renowned for having barrels of beer and um, enjoying themselves. And uh, you know, I think you're not allowed that anymore. Things of political correctness, I'm afraid, has killed a lot of the fun. But anyway, yeah. that's by the by. So that, that's the first day, Sunday. Monday, it's um, a feature, or what it's called now, something that's probably called it's something different, shooting at... Um, uh, distances marked in meters. Uh, then the Tuesday was a field shoot, and Wednesday was longbows only, and they got up to about 200 longbow archers shooting on that day. So that's probably the biggest gathering of longbow shooters at a tournament in the country. Yeah. Uh, Thursday was a clout shoot. Friday was an ordinary target shoot, so it's like shorter, shorter distances. And then the following weekend, which we're still in, Saturday, Sunday, uh, was uh, generally a double York for the men, double Hereford for the ladies. And that was the Grand Western Archery Championships. Uh, so there's a mixture of serious stuff and uh, you know, a bit more relaxed shooting. Mm. Uh, and that's still going on. And it's a good, a good shoot. And lots of people really, really enjoy it. So let's say nowadays um, you've got all, all um, types of bows being used and the line is full of tents for people to sit in or whatever they do in them. Uh, but a total change from the old wooden, wooden bench <laughs> of the early days. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's Dunster Archery Week. So good week. Yeah, I mean, there's not many uh, shoots on the calendar that... Uh, last that long or have that many events within it uh shoots tend to be sort of one or two day at, uh, at most so it's, it's quite an unusual uh it, it is competition yeah. it's uh, yeah and, and and as richard says it, it involves everybody of all types of disciplines which again is quite unusual um it's quite a lot of people yeah a lot of people use it as a, as a holiday because mm -hmm. it's slightly early in the season uh, and it's a nice place to take the family. The, the, the scenery is, is very interesting and dramatic around there. And lots of, I mean, Dunster Castle is an interesting place to look mm. around anyway. And, and lots of other um, country houses. Yeah. Uh, Wordsworth's uh, house is a few miles down the road. Um, yeah, so interesting. And of course, the adult weekend at Minehead is uh, is available just down the road, uh, which is uh, always on at the same time. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it clashes, unfortunately. <laughs> That's a very different type of event in a tent. That's <laughs> very different. <laughs> well, uh, we've done in, in my head when some of the people are wandering around who attend these things. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> worth going to. Yeah. No, Minehead's a nice place. Yeah, if you've never been, actually, the Minehead and Dunster genuinely is a, a, a nice holiday area anyway, even if uh, yeah. if you're not going there for the uh, Dunster Archery Week. We've done a couple of video reports from the Dunster Archery Week. I'll stick those at the end of this video and in the uh, box below if you want to see those. Um, we've got some bits and pieces, some new things and some old things that have come into our workshop that are for sale. I believe you've got some there, Richard, to show us. Um, what got. Yeah, I've been going through this old stock of arrow shafts um, that we've come across. Uh, we've got them for sale, but I've just uh, got together this next bunch. They're pine, but they're very good quality pine, and they've darkened down to quite a nice colour. Mm. Uh, they're 32 inches long, and these are tapered from about 23 sixty-fourths of an inch, which is three-eighths, give or take. And it tapers down to the knock end at 11 32nd. So they're a fairly robust shaft, uh, and I would have thought they'd have been ideal for roving. Mm. Uh, these are spine 45, 50 pound, um, so no, no good for a 100 pound bow. But if you've got a, a decent, um, you know, reasonably heavy bow sort of you know, 60 70 pounds or something they probably um probably be fine um if you're going to keep them longer then perhaps a 50 50 60 pound bow um but they're 
They're a good shaft, and we've got those on at a, a special price. I think it's about nineteen ninety nine. I think just under twenty pound a dozen. Um, so a good a good buy if anyone wants them. Yeah, I'll put the uh, website up uh, up above or down below, and also it's uh, it's in the box below if you want the actual link. Yeah, the other thing we've got, and we will be talking about arrows in a minute, I think, mm. um, a set of what were probably made as clout arrows. They actually taper from the pile end, which is probably about a quarter of an inch, uh, back to the knock end, which would be probably five sixteenth. And these were made by Charlie Warmingham, who was the... Uh, Bowyer at the Woodman of Arden's ground at Meriden, and the Bowyer's workshop is still there, actually, which we've uh, visited. Uh, there's all sorts of bits and pieces in there. Uh, the general public and the hoi polloi are not allowed in, of course. You've got to be Lord something or other, or fairly well connected uh, to be uh, a member of the Woodman. Uh, but we've got these, and they're actually got the weight marked on them at four shillings. And this is how they used to weigh arrows in that time. And I've checked the weight, uh, wrote it down somewhere. Yes, 350 grains, and there's a set of eight of them. And they are all, except for two, which vary by two grains, they are all dead on 350 grains. So must have spent a lot of time getting these right. They're footed. Probably with green heart, I think, by the looks of it. Uh, the rest of it is is pine, and they're they're crested, uh, twenty eight inches long. So we'll be putting those for sale. So those are a nice set of arrows, and I I think I've checked them all, and they're all perfectly straight as well. You probably can't see me spinning those, but. Uh, be at the idea. Don't break the computer. <laughs> no, don't break them. There'll be a set of seven of eight. <laughs> don't break the computer. You can get more of those. You can't get any more of these. You can always get a computer, can't you? You don't want to go back to Curry's with the computer. They, they're used to that. If you go to Dixon's or Curry's with your computer, they're used to Coca-Cola being spilt in it, not arrows going through it. I think you've got a hard time explaining that one. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we do a video shooting arrows through a computer? Or was we did. I'll put that on oh. the screen right now, and you can oh, all that. There we go. <laughs> well, there you are. That's right. Yeah. So big, that's there. Yeah. So those, those will go on the uh, yeah on the shop, and someone will get a good good set of arrows. Yeah. We'll put all the details on the spine and all the rest of it. Yeah. If you don't see them on there yet, they will be on there soon. They'll uh, give us. Yeah, I think they're about 40, 40 pound spine, so they're going to suit sort of fifty fifty five pound boats. Well, that leads us on to our next uh, section of our archery and things video that we're doing. One of the things that you've noticed, particularly um, with sort of social media type stuff, um, and this was kind of inspired by uh, a YouTube comment, but we've seen it a million times as I'm not trying to refer to a specific person or embarrass anyone in particular or use any names or anything like that because it happens a lot. But people often ask, say, about spining shafts to match their bow, but they don't just ask one source or to go to one source. They don't just use one book. They'll, say, ask someone in their club. They'll ask perhaps a supplier of shafts, one of the perhaps larger retailers. Um, they'll then put that a comment on Facebook or something asking everyone um, they'll put perhaps their details of their bow and ask what weight or spine of shafts that they should be buying well the trouble is if you do that you do then get confused because you'll get about three or four different opinions um, and as I say this happened recently with with somebody where they've got to the point where they where they really are they're just so confused and don't know which one to go for um, and really we just wanted to point out that if you are asking lots of people, say, for example, asking on Facebook, you will probably get lots of answers. It's, you're no better off. Um, you're probably better off sticking with one source of information if you can, uh, a trusted source. And we're not saying always come to us. There are plenty of other people who make bows and arrows, there are plenty of other people who sell them. 
Um, but there is one one way round of, uh, of of making sure you get the correct thing before you put all your money into buying twelve shafts, twelve piles, three dozen feathers um, to make up your set. And Richard's got a cunning way round of doing it without spending all your money in one go. So, what, what is that method? You still spend you still spend all your money. You still spend all your money, but there's slightly <laughs> less money than buying twelve. Oh, all right, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to buy a dozen shafts if, um, from us. You can ring up, and we've done this in the past. We have um, perhaps four sets of three shafts each of a different spine because it's all very well being scientific about matching arrows, and you can do that with spine, with weight, with a point of center, you can divide the length by the draw weight of the bow and get the pounds per inch and all the, all the rest. So you can do all that if you want. Um, but it comes down to the bow you're shooting, how well it's made, the speed of it, um, how wide it is at the handle, um, your own technique, uh, whether you're shooting with a glove or a tab or whether you've got a, a dead loose or a flying loose or... You know, your the people's technique affects things a great deal, and we probably mentioned this before. There's an old story of, of Howard Hill, who was the um, American uh, archer, professional archer, uh, who did a lot of work for the film industry. Uh, he would go to a shoot and he would pick up arrows out of everyone's quiver. They were all different lengths, different weights, and he would shoot them all perfectly. I mean, he might have been an archery genius, but it, you know, your own technique and knowing what you're doing makes an awful lot of difference. I think people will be much better off spending more time practicing, practicing. and practicing properly uh, than than spending hours worrying about their arrows. Mm. But that's that's another thing. Mm. So if someone wanted um, sets you know sets of three arrows making up a dozen or two even two arrows if they wanted it really doesn't matter to us mm. um you can do that if you want two or three piles and then make sets of di different weights so you don't need to buy a dozen piles every time um the knocks assuming you're using the same size knocks okay if you want to use different size knocks we could do that as well uh, different size fletchings. Again, we, we could we could probably work something work something out. So it means that you can then make up some arrows. You can use different pile weights on them, and you can shoot them and try them, mm. and see which ones work best for you. Um, if you're field shooting, yeah, you probably want a four inch fletch because it steadies the arrow up more quickly, and a heavier pile helps as well. If you're target shooting, maybe a lighter pile, smaller fletches, two and a half. But the length of the arrow, I mean, I spoke to someone the other day. They said, oh, I've got a 27-inch draw. Um, someone's made them some arrows, and they're 31 inches long. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got four inches of arrow that you don't need. You're projecting through the air. You need a little bit of longer arrow for safety, but, you, you know, an inch is probably sufficient as long as you're competent and, and know that you're, you're drawing, you're not a right beginner, in, in which case, then, yeah, a little bit longer. But once you start thinking, well, I, why can't I reach the target at 100 yards? Well, you're propelling another four inches of arrow through the air. So you could make up the arrows, you can make them different lengths. Um, if we were able to provide screw-on piles, you probably wouldn't, wouldn't need to glue the piles on. You could just unscrew them, shorten the arrow a bit, screw them back on, and, and do it that way. So trial and error counts for a lot because you can match the arrows to the nth degree we've made a set of arrows for a, a very good lady archer um and they were matched we'd matched them all up and everything and out of the set there was one arrow that just didn't shoot like the others it just didn't go in the same place and we checked the weight we checked the length we checked the spine we checked the balance center of balance this. and all the rest of it and it, it was exactly the same, but it just didn't fly the same. So unfortunately, wooden shafts do vary, and they're going to vary in density along their length. Mm. Um, it's just something we, we've got to live with. So, yeah, matching them up as best you can, great. But there's no point in matching them if they don't match you and your bow. Mm. So you need to sort that out uh, to start with. Uh, and the physical weight of arrows, 
And my field arrows that I've got here, um, that I've been using eight, four inch fletch, those bright colors so I can see them on the very rare occasion I miss, miss the target. Um, 100 grain field pile. So a relatively heavy arrow. Uh, you need a heavy arrow to steady them up, uh, shooting between the trees and branches and all that sort of stuff. The ones I use for target shooting, let's find one of those somewhere, is that, which I've got a 63 grain pile, so a lighter pile. And these weigh about 320 grains, so they're lighter than the field ones. Smaller fletch, two and a half inch fletch, just cuts down the drag. Uh, so that's those. And I was having a little bit of trouble in getting 100 yards, uh, as was my wife Lindsay getting 80 yards. So we made up some from 932nd diameter shafts, a little bit lighter. These are about 290 grains. Uh, I think I've got a 63 grain pile on there, but we do do a 50 grain pile and a 35 grain pile in 930 seconds. So you've got a bit of a choice. Uh, again, small, small fletchings, but a, a lighter arrow uh, just to get a bit more speed. Um, it can be affected by the wind a bit more, obviously, um, but uh, gets that extra little bit of uh, speed out of the, the bow. So, so th there's lots of, lots of options, but if you, unless you know, what to go for, you, you know, you, you don't know. So worth, no, um, no. worth thinking about getting some sample bits if you want, uh, but you would need to ring us up. Uh, we haven't got that offered on the site. It would be too complicated. So a, a phone call and we can probably sort, sort something out. Yeah, phone is phone number and everything I'll put below, and it's obviously on our website, yeah. which will also be below. So, yeah, do give us a call if you want to do that. Um, I think uh, probably a, a similar analogy would be probably things like clothing. Um, I'm sure during the health issue that's been happening during this year, I'm sure a lot of us have been ordering things online and having to return them because it's the wrong size or whatever actually physically being able to try something like a new pair of shoes or a new coat or whatever it is is usually often the only way of finding out whether it suits you and it's basically the same with the arrows um you you won't often get it right with the first set that you either buy or make you only tend to find out later on once you've been using them that they actually suit what it is that you're the, 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 your, the type of shooting that you're trying to do can vary as well, can't it? I mean, it's don't want, we don't want them back. Really? Not, well, like the, not like the, the trousers that don't fit you. We no, don't want no, the shafts back. No, no, you can't send them back with clods of mud all over them. You, no, not quite the same. We've got no, our exactly. own like that. We've got exactly, plenty of those. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, I don't think people appreciate by making new sets of arrows and you sending them back. I don't, wouldn't advise it. <laughs> um but yeah it's uh it's 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 a shame it's, it's one of those things that's sort of unavoidable you need to kind of um uh it's uh you, you do need to try these things out so yeah i think the, the method that richard suggests is is a good way around it You're just trying a few at a time um this also applies to things like the bow making as well we get a lot of people asking questions uh but can you see it on facebook and what have you it's the same problem they'll be asking their mate they'll be asking another bowyer then another bowyer and then they'll ask us and then all they'll ask on Facebook an open question about the same thing that they've been trying to find out where it's how to cut something out or what dimensions they should use. And of course, you get about 10 different answers. Um, so if you can with this sort of thing, if you're if you're making a bow and you've been, say, following instructions from a book, try and stick with the measurements and things that are in that book or from that one person that you've been following, whether it's our website or somebody else's instructional video or something. Try and stick with the one piece of uh, advice. Otherwise, you will just end up getting confused. Um, that's certainly what we've been seeing anyway. Um Talking of which, we do obviously, yes, have our own bow and arrow making website. A website? A website. We've got a website and a website. The uh, I, I recommend the website over the website. It's not quite as Yeah, we'll be making those later. Yeah, yeah. not quite as good as the website. But the, uh, the bow, and bow and arrow making website, which I'll put on the screen and again in the thing below, um, you're going to be mainly going below and uh, looking and clicking on all the exciting things that are down there in the box underneath this video. 
uh, where, yes, we try and collate the videos in some sort of structure so that there's a section on arrow making, section on bone making. And I've recently been rejigging the website, dividing the sections up. So you're starting with um, the materials, how to select materials, um, gluing them up into a stave and, and actually try to put it in some sort of format. So then the left hand side of the screen, you got you can follow along the different sections and the different videos that are within those sections. And hopefully you'll be able to make your own set of arrows or make your own bow. Um, that website uh, is something unfortunate that does cost us money. So this is the section of the video where we will be asking you if you wish to and would like to see that website continue and see these videos that we make continue to donate there is a paypal donate button again in that section below which i was just saying that you'll be going there a million times and it's also on the banner at the top of the home page of our youtube channel so if you'd like to see the website continue and if you'd like to see these videos continue because as we mentioned before in the last video and the video before that, we are unfortunately not going to be a YouTube super YouTubers with lots of videos that do tremendously well and earn us millions, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, it's your donations and your very kind help which keeps these videos going. So if you think we've already helped you and you've been using our information and you've been successful in making bows and arrows, uh, then a donation would be greatly appreciated in keeping it going and collating all this information for years to come um, because obviously he'll be dead soon uh, or is he over there Hit him not me i'm gonna last forever but you never know he's getting look at him he's already gone oh sorry <laughs> no can, can, can i i thought i thought you had a heart attack i thought you had gone <laughs> no I was, I was reading something can i make a, a correction to my earlier ramblings yes please do i said that's uh, <laughs> dunster was Wordsworth's cottage. It's not. It's Coleridge. Ah. Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Um, he was friends with Wordsworth. So I'm, only mates, half, they? Yeah. I'm only half right. So Wordsworth did stay with him there, I think, occasionally. They were friends. Um, and he, <laughs> Coleridge, uh, he wrote The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. He did. Yeah, he did. And they took Lord and them together, I think. Amongst other things, probably. That's what you, you, can do, is it? you can actually visit his cottage, which is open to public. Is it? Very, oh. very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Oh. Do you, is there a shop? Can you buy, can you buy you stayed, stuff you in the shop? In the village. You stayed in the village, didn't you? Didn't you? Probably. Yes, you did. Did I? Yeah, you did. You must have done. And you can buy the odd albatross there as well. They're for sale. <laughs> Albatross. Oh, yes, that's right. You can get it, you can hang it around your neck. That's the one. Around yeah. the village. That's right. You walk around the village with it around your neck and people point at you. <laughs> anyway, so that, that was my the correction. So I was half right. <laughs> but you can visit his cottage. Where, where, if you're down there, well worth a visit. You're making this very difficult to edit. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you never edit anything anyway. You don't. <laughs> Press the button and it goes. Just put it on. I don't know anything about editing. No, I know you don't. Buggins <laughs> here. That's do all the editing. Don't need to edit anything. Anyway, that's it. Yeah, I'm not going to say go card now. You can't have can it. Can I go now and have a Father's Day beer or something? You have to. Don't have any laudanum. We've got to watch the football, haven't we? Oh, yeah. We're, 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 good luck to Wales. We're, Wales versus okay. the foreigners. Italy, I believe. Oh, that's the ones, yeah. They're yes, ones. there'll be pasta afterwards or lava bread. What are the other? Depending on, <laughs> depending on who wins. Anyway, there we are. Uh, so thanks for watching, folks. And I uh, hope you found our ramblings vaguely interesting. All those websites and other things. You don't have to donate. We don't care. Uh, if you don't, you don't want. If you, if you want this to carry on, then do. If you don't, you don't. <laughs> It'll all end. <laughs> we can all go somewhere. <laughs> Anyway, thanks very much, folks, and we'll see you again soon. <laughs> Bye. Happy Father's Day, everybody. That's a father. <laughs>